Greetings, guests. Welcome to The Patriarchy, where we explore cinema classics fueled by predictive Hollywood programming and unpack how our favorite characters in cinema got egg all over their faces. I am your commentator, Dom, and tonight we're unpacking. Welcome to the dollhouse. I want you to imagine being in middle school and being isolated by literally all of your peers. <laughs> Lesbo, Lesbo, Lesbo. Then also imagine coming home and being isolated by your family as well. And on top of that, the isolation that you experience in your family is not led by typical sibling rivalry, but led by your very own mother. She's a loner. This all lends itself to the brewing of the most insecure and low self-esteem preteen ever. And this is the story of Don Weiner, a seventh grader at Benjamin Franklin Junior High in the suburbs of New Jersey. Welcome to the Dollhouse is a coming-of-age dark comedy that debuted in 95-96 as an independent film about a very isolated middle school teen. There are many different themes carried throughout this film. There's bullying, sexual confusion, and abandonment. And we'll explore how all of Dawn's childhood trauma can be traced back to her very own mother. The start of the film opens up with Dawn looking for a seat in the school cafeteria. She goes to an empty table and asks another seemingly loner type girl to sit down. And immediately she's tested by this girl, who's looking to see her reaction after letting her sit in a seat that she knew that someone previously threw up in. And she's also tested by a band of cheerleaders who walk up to her and ask very rudely, Sorry to bother you, but we were just wondering, are you a lesbian? <laughs> As Dawn goes throughout her school day and the days to follow, we see that her locker is vandalized with crude remarks about her. She's ironically bullied by the other loner girl at school. Guys throw spitballs at her and make lewd gestures towards her. And even her teachers, the educators, have absolutely no compassion for her. And why is this? Dawn looks pretty normal. She doesn't dress quote-unquote weirdly or anything. She's pretty smart and she's even in the club, the Hummingbirds. So why is she having so much trouble socially at school? One thought. I was fighting back. Who ever told you to fight back? She has no boundaries, and this is taught and enforced by her very own mother. See, when you display as a kid or even as an adult a lack of boundaries, everyone will see you as easy prey. Someone who won't fight back, a punching bag, a punch line, an easy hit. People know not to antagonize a pit bull but a breed that's less unassuming may get prodded and poked. And this is Dawn constantly being poked because she was taught not to fight back. And by the time she does, it's too late. And also, unfortunately, we see that although Dawn doesn't punch back, she does punch down. And this is displayed in the way in which she treats her only friend, Ralphie, because she has no power over anything, including how she's treated by her classmates and her own family. She takes this out on someone that she deems as quote-unquote below her, her younger friend who's not even in middle school yet. Now let's talk about how the bullying of Dawn, because she doesn't stand up for herself, molds her very troubling view about guys and sex. So parallel to the bullying, Dawn is also receiving some interesting attention from one of the kids that was bullying her, Brandon. See, after Dawn finally starts fighting back, she makes a remark to Brandon that offends him, and he responds by saying that he's going to forcibly S.A. her. Now this has Dawn shook initially. 
But after some time, she kind of goes along with it. And the two, although they never cross that boundary, actually form some kind of relationship. It's an odd thing to get romantically involved with your former bully and the person who threatened to sexually violate you. But Dawn has such low self-esteem that she kind of takes any form of male attention that she can get. And this leads us to Steve Rogers, an older high school guy who starts hanging around their house because her older brother is tutoring him in exchange for him to play in their band. Now, Dawn crushes on Steve, yes, because I guess you can consider him conventionally attractive, but she crushes a lot harder and is actually willing to and wants to be intimate with him very simply because he was nice to her. And to be clear, Steve did not show any romantic interest in this seventh grade girl whatsoever. He was simply being cordial and nice to Mark's little sister. But this minute amount of interest was platonic, simply casual conversation like, how do you like junior high? And because Dawn is so starved for attention, both at school and at home, now she wants to turn herself into the type of girl that she thinks that he will want. She's looking for male validation. And this all again stems from her parents, her mom and dad, who focus way too much on their youngest daughter, Missy, and a little bit on their oldest son because he's about to go off to college. But that middle child, Dawn, she is left with an emptiness and lack of regard from her own family that she's now seeking out in men. Now, there are plenty of points in the film which is clear that Dawn is abandoned by her own mother. We see the abandonment when she gets in trouble earlier for fighting back and her mom questions this act. We see it when her parents are planning for their anniversary and because Dawn is starting to stand up for herself and doesn't want to tear down her clubhouse, her mom isolates her at the dinner table not giving her her dessert. And on top of that, letting her other two, I guess, more favorite kids split her piece of the cake. She's even talking about Dawn like she's not in the room. Her entire family also is laughing at her when it's caught on video, her little sister Missy pushing her into the pool. She experiences so much abandonment from her family, but also from Brandon after she tells him that she likes Steve. She also experiences abandonment from Steve after visually trying to mold herself into a girl that she thinks that he'll like and he dismisses her. But the coup de gras of abandonment comes after she goes to New York, looking for a very heroic moment in finding her younger sister, only to find out that nobody, and I mean nobody, notices nor cares that she's gone once Missy is back at home. It was very hard to feel sorry for Dawn as even though it's obvious that her character is suffering from so many issues that stem from her very own toxic and absent family, her actions as a result of this actually do cause others harm. To conclude, I want to go back to the family portrait that the film opens up with. The film begins with this portrait zooming in and eventually focusing in on Dawn, the main character. However, I see this portrait as a photo that Dawn can easily be cropped out of. It's a powerful clue and a visual statement that lends itself to the dynamics of this family that the viewer is about to watch. Mom's hands are placed on on the two most important people in her life, her youngest daughter Missy and her husband, and Dawn, the middle child, is far off to the side like an extra. Her dad isn't even leaning her way. So if you've seen this movie, I'm interested in knowing your thoughts about it. Share them down below. This movie also has a soundtrack that has some very provocative and questionable lyrics. I'd encourage everyone to Google the lyrics of Welcome to the Dollhouse. They really should be analyzed, but that's not what I do here. But if you haven't seen the movie, it's free to watch on Tubi. As always, if you've enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Signing off now, your friend, Dom.